y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another Cricut project. So today we are going to be doing an infusible ink sign on an aluminum sheet. Now this is not a new uh, process. It's not something that I haven't even done on this channel before, but I have gotten so many questions from y'all when I've made signs like this in the past about whether or not infusible ink is weather resistant enough to go outside. So we're going to be making a little garden sign. You can see it says, I'd rather be gardening. I'm going to punch two holes in the top and we are going to hang this baby outside and I will update y'all in a couple months on how it is holding up. Now infusible ink, as you will see, it is a real ink sheet that actually uh, bonds to the surface of our aluminum. You can only use uh, certain blanks, things with a sublimation coating or certain materials to actually put your infusible ink onto. Not all metals work. Um, these are aluminum sheets from Cricut that have a sublimation coating. You can get them from lots of places, but I do like these. I've used them for lots of projects. Um, and while the ink is bonded to the aluminum, or I should say once it's bonded, it should be as as weather resistant as the material that it's on. So aluminum is, of course it may rust over time, but that has nothing to do with the ink. And this is a pretty small sign, so it should not It should be fine outside for many years. Um, we are going to go ahead and put this outside. I also made one that has infusible ink layered with iron on, and if you want to watch this video, there's a completely different process to layer iron on over infusible ink than is to do a complete infusible ink sign. I will link this down below. But um, I have a little sign that is missing a garden flag. It's actually my mom's. It lost the rung for its garden flag years ago and she has, she's mentioned it several times. So I made her these and I am going to add them to her garden sign and we're going to see how they hold up in the garden. But today we are going to focus on making the sign. So let's open Cricut Design Space and get started. Start by opening our file in Cricut Design Space. Um, you can open a new canvas and then add this little top guy straight to your canvas. This is just an image that I grabbed from my Cricut Design uh, Access Library over here. I just searched gardening and then picked a file that I liked. I will link this exact one down below if you want to make the exact same sign I am making. Uh, from here, I created an offset so that I have a background for my uh, words, I suppose. I find that the pattern doesn't always do well as words. So I'm going to be doing black letters on our pattern here. Now, since infusible ink doesn't do well being heated up different times, we are not going to be layering uh, vinyl or iron on over our infusible ink for this metal sign. You can do that. I'm going to be doing a different tutorial showing you how to layer iron on over infusible ink, um, but it's it just gives you a different look. So we'll compare those in that video. For this video, we are going to stick straight with our infusible ink. And so what that means is we're going to have to slice these. So I've selected both, I've clicked slice. Perfect. And that's going to give us this middle layer here that that's basically our top layer cut out of that bottom layer. So what we need to do is just delete that layer and now we have negative space in our back layer where our top layer will fit snugly in and we do not have an overlap of the teal over the black in our physical design. This unfortunately means that we are going to be taking each of these little teal pieces out of our cut pieces and layering them, physically layering them into the black background. And it's not a difficult process. I will show you the whole thing, but it is a little tedious. It does give you great results though. So that's why we do it with our infusible ink pieces. So we're going to go ahead now and click make. We are going to be using a mat with our Maker 3. You can use a Maker and Explore Air 2, Explore Air 3. 
any of these things that can cut with a fine point blade, which is your standard cutting blade um, on a cutting mat. Perfect. Since this is infusible ink, we are going to mirror both of our designs. We need to be cutting them out backwards. Perfect. And we are going to be using infusible ink. So select that infusible ink and it will remind you right here, make sure the mirror is turned on. You can see that it is and your material will be loaded ink side up. I'm going to select more pressure and we are good to go. I will meet you over at the machine where we will load all of our pieces together. All right, y'all. So here is our infusible ink sheet on our cutting mat. I'm going to lay it down flat and you will notice that the infusible ink is very, very light compared to the color that is actually on the box. And that's okay. When it heats up, it will turn to the true color. So if you open that box, you notice, hey, this is not the color on the box. That's all right. We're going to put it down ink side up. Make sure your hands are clean and dry. Your work surface is clean and dry. It is ink, physically ink. So if you get it wet at all, it will start to smear and smudge, which is the opposite of the goal here. All right, mirror is turned on, ink is face up. We are cutting into the background layer, which is perfect for this blue. We're doing the letters out of the black. So we are all set and we're going to hit go. looks perfect so now we're going to take this off the cutting mat so that we can cut our next layer and you're always going to want to turn the entire piece over and curl your cutting mat away from your ink making sure the ink stays straight otherwise you will get really curly ink it's not the not the goal Perfect. Set our ink aside for just a second. And now we're going to put our black layer down. Make sure if you're in between and you're not using your ink, you have leftover pieces, you're always putting them back in these black bags, back in their boxes, because they're very light sensitive and you don't want them to lighten in the sun in between uses. So I already used one of the sheets out of this pack this sheet was the leftover. We put him back in his box. There we go. All set to cut the second layer. And there is our words and our little icons. The 
goodness gracious. All right, so I went ahead and I cut these free from their larger pieces. And this is where the fun begins because all of these two sheets need to be combined into one sheet with both colors on it. So that means from our background, we need to remove all of the letters, all of our icons, but we need to leave the background pieces, which in these icons means those tiny little pieces. Okay. So we're going to take those out and we are going to replace them with the pieces from this sheet. Now they're pretty stiff. You don't want to use a weeding tool for this because you can scratch your ink and they really come off fairly easily. So we're going to take them and all we're going to do is fit them right in the spaces on the background. And this, the backing of this sheet is sticky. So they fit right in there. Now it's going to take a minute to do all of those pieces. So give me a second. I'm going to go switch them. All right, so we are all set now. We've got our aluminum here, and this has a protective film on both sides of it. We are going to take the gold off, and the gold side goes down. So there are two sides on here. Oh, I hate taking this film off. And the gold side is not compatible with our infusible ink. So gold side down. They're so close. There we go. Silver side up. Silver is what our infusible ink will bond to. So that's a very important step of this process. There we go. Perfect. Now. Here's our design. You can see all the pieces are in place. Now they are very delicate and sometimes want to pop up no matter how sticky the carrier sheet is. So we're going to very carefully put this face down Whoop. and we have to make sure that all the pieces stay in place while we are doing that. Anything that moves or shifts before we heat it up, as we heat it up, before it is finished, will not be in place when we're done. So keeping it as straight as we can so that they don't get curved. Flip it over. All right. Center it. Start straight. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna make it sure it's nice and steady. And honestly, that should be enough. That carrier sheet is pretty sticky, but I'm gonna put some heat resistant washi tape and I just keep it on this little tape holder. help keep it in place. Again, if anything shifts while it's being heated, it's not good. And I go off the edges, just it makes it easier to grab. So there we go. We are now ready to heat this baby up. And our easy press is set to 385 for 40 seconds. We're going to press down firmly for the full 40 seconds, making sure not to shift or move this around because it needs to be very, very still so we don't get a hazy effect with our infusible ink. So try to push steady straight down through the center of your easy press. For the full 40 seconds. It 
it will beep when it's finished, when it gets to zero, and we will lift it straight up. All right. So now we are going to leave it. It's hot, hot, hot to the touch. And once it is cooled down, we will peel that off and reveal the final look. All right, so it is cool to the touch completely. You can see I picked it up to kind of see and some of the things shifted. Once it's cool and your heat is off, the infusible ink sheet will separate like 100% easily leaving the ink behind. That's what we want. So it's not a bad thing unless it did not transfer properly. And that is the only time that would be a problem. You can see here, that's not the case. We got a perfect transfer. Sharp edges, no bleeding. And that is the beauty of the layering effect. So we're gonna go ahead and punch holes in the top of this. And I'm going to bring it outside to hang in the garden. And we will see how the ink holds up over the next couple months. But. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to do great. I think it looks perfect. We're going to go put it in the garden. I also did one with iron on over the infusible ink and you can see that the glue doesn't always work as well with the infusible ink as it could, but that is the benefit of infusible ink with infusible ink. You get those crisp clear lines and this is never going to react to the elements. So we're gonna take these outside. We're going to put them back to back on a little sign holder that my mom has. It actually used to have a garden flag and she, the, the whole sign got messed up, so now it doesn't. So we're going to make her new garden signs with these and I will update you in a, in a couple months on how they are doing and holding up in the garden. I do not see any issues with the infusible ink. We will see if the iron-on can hang. Hope you liked this project. If you did, make sure you're liked. You're liked. Make sure you're subscribed, like the video. I will be back with more Cricut projects anytime now. I put them out almost every week, if not every month. So I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.